Hey everyone, it's Blue Game Dev here and welcome to a new video. It's been literally 5 months now since my last upload. It's because I've been busy recreating my game. Now, as some of you may already know, I am currently developing my first indie action platformer game using the Mac Studio game engine or a straightforward game engine for mobile devices. I uploaded my first devlog on June 21st, 2022 and fast forward for a couple of weeks later, I managed to make some decent progress on the game. I managed to make a couple of levels, some decent enemies, a couple of player abilities, and lastly, a boss fight. I was pretty happy with the amount of progress I made so far, especially that my devlogs are doing great to be honest. The amount of support you guys have given to me in my previous devlog is insane, and I wanna say thank you for that. Furthermore, on the month of October, I finally got my new PC, which is great. And this is also the time that I have completely decided to recreate my game on a new different game engine called Godot, or Godot, depending on how you pronounce it. Now, there's maybe a 66% chance that you might be asking, why did you choose Godot? I mean, there's plenty of game engines out there like Unity, GameMaker, Unreal Engine, or a codeless game engine perhaps, like GDevelop. Like, why Godot? Well, here's the reason why I choose Godot. First of all, Godot is a free open source, all-in-one, cross-platform game engine that makes it easy for everybody to create 2D and 3D games. Godot can be easier to learn, especially for beginners like me who wants to try game development for the first time. The open source game engine might be perfect for building my first indie game project. Compared to other game engines, Godot may be simpler to master, although the Godot community is still rather tiny, it is active and willing to assist you in learning how to use the engine. Additionally, the team behind the tool is hard at work developing a future iteration of the engine that will be more competitive and versatile. Another thing that really hooked me up in using the Godot engine is a built-in programming language, which is the GD script. GDScript, or the scripting language used in the Godot engine, is also well suited for beginners. It is similar to Python in its syntax and structures, but it's specifically designed for game development. This makes it easier for beginners like me to learn game development concept and get started making my own games. Additionally, Godot has a user-friendly interface and many built-in features for game development, which can make the process of creating games easier for beginners. However, as with any programming language, the learning curve can be steep and may require a lot of practice and dedication. In conclusion, using the Godot engine and learning GED script is a great choice for me and for anyone who is interested in game development. If you want to try game development for the first time, then I highly suggest to use the Godot engine since it's really great for beginners. Anyways, now that we have tackled about that, Let's move on to the process of how I managed to recreate this into a project like this. Alright, let's start off at the very beginning of how I recreated my indie game. So, basically, I started from scratch by making a new version of the player's character using a sprite. I decided to put the sword behind their character instead of holding it, since I think it would be cool. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Since the design is rather simple, there isn't anything really insane going on here. I then started working on several animations, including the walking animation, jumping animation, attack animation, damage animation, and finally the death animation. I then created some ground tile sets, which is really simple work, imported it all into Godot, and I then wrote some simple code to provide the fundamental game mechanics, such as walking, jumping, and attacking. I then added some grass and trees to the scene to give it a more living sense and we can look at that. I then started working on making some simple enemies into the game. I was actually planning to make an AI enemy but that is pretty goddamn hard. Since I'm a complete beginner in programming, I don't have enough knowledge to make a really smart enemy so I have to stick with a simple enemy behavior. Currently, the game only has two enemies, which is a skeleton and another skeleton. Yeah, except for this one though, it has a shield and a viking helmet. 
The difference between the two is that the normal skeleton is much weaker compared to the other one. It can deal a small amount of damage and you can kill it in just one strike with your sword. Now the second skeleton is much stronger than the normal skeleton. It can deal more damage and it is also has more health than the normal skeleton. Then I got to work on making the background of the game, which is not the best I would say. I will probably change this thing in the future, but I think it will do it for now. It's just a temporary background. And that's pretty much all the progress I made so far. I mean, you might be saying that I haven't really done, you know, a really big progress in the game. Especially that I've been out for like a couple months now. Well, it's because I can't really work consistently on the game because I've been also busy on some other important things, especially on school and some other personal stuff. But now I will actually try my very best to upload at least once a week just to give you guys more content and keep this channel alive and I really hope you guys will still support me. Anyways, I think that would be it for this video, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it and uh, if you did then make sure to leave a like and you know those YouTube things and stuff like that and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in the next one.